we were going along fairly well. And then the uh, uh, producer on the show, the assistant producer, the uh, United States had just introduced the draft before World War II. And he came to me and says, uh, my, uh, he says, I got a brother up at Camp Pendleton. And he said, why don't we take the show out and do it for the, for the soldiers for once? And Bob said, you got to be crazy. You know, we're doing the show in the studio. We're doing all right. You know what it would cost to take it out there? Forget it. And then finally, they kept working on him, working. He said, listen, my brother says the guys are so lonesome. They come on, do the show. And they found a way the uh, Pepsi decided to pick up the extra tab. And we went, I was with that first group on the bus. We went to Camp Pendleton with the show for the, for the soldiers. And uh, boy, uh, you have to realize that when you take a, thousands of men and you isolate them more or less, they're waiting for anything to break it. And it was the best audience that we had at the time. And Bob said, that's it. He never went back to the studio. And so we didn't learn really our lesson until a couple of weeks later, we were going down to the, for the Navy at the San Diego Naval Base. And by that time, we had the two girls, Brendan Cobina, supposedly the ugliest girls in the world. We did the ugly jokes. And we had Vera Vague, who is a, a complete zany character. And uh, so we went down and we had this tremendous audience, thousands of the sailors in this big auditorium down at uh, San Diego Naval Base. And Bob, we're doing the show, and we're into the sketch, and Vera Vague comes in with her opening and says, oh, I'm so excited. She says, I just kissed, I just kissed the head of the Navy. And the place broke up. We couldn't go on. They were screaming and shouting. I, I said, what the hell is this? And at the end of the show, we asked about, we didn't know what a head was, but all of the sailors knew. And she said she had just kissed the head of the Navy. And after that, we realized there was a new language. It was a GI Navy language, and we switched over. We would send somebody down in advance to find out which, which bars they, they frequented, what was going on in the town, which officers they hated. We made it all local, and with all the GI patois and so forth, and we helped spread that language. And Bob became so popular, obviously, as you know, uh, he was sent to North Africa 